Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Well, welcome back to my channel, Inside to Him. So if you aren't familiar, I am hosting an Instagram challenge called Social Mashup with Lori from Girls of the Garden. And Social Mashup is basically a sewing challenge uh, where you combine two different patterns to make one unique garment. The bodice from one, the skirt from another, the pants from one, the bodice from another, the sleeve from one, you know, you get the idea. You combine them all to make your own kind of unique design. And a lot of you have already hit the ground running and already submitting your finished garments, which is great. But I also know there are some of you who are like, I don't know how to do that. Either you've just started sewing or you have never really kind of thought outside the box this way. So this video is for you guys. I'm gonna teach you my tips and my methods for mashing up different patterns. Um, it's really a lot of fun and not nearly as complicated as you may think. So first things first, fabric requirements. It might go without saying, but I just wanted to cover all the bases with this video and make sure you all understand that you can't mix patterns if one is a knit pattern and one is a woven pattern. The garment ease is different in each of those and the pieces won't come together correctly. You have to really pay attention to seam lines, especially if you are working with tops, uh, dresses, jumpsuits, things of that nature. So if you have a horizontal seam that is either empire waist, at your waistline, drop waist, wherever it is along your body, you can mix and match that those pattern pieces with any other pattern that has the same matching horizontal seam line. So for example, if you have a horizontal seam line at empire waist, you can take the bodice of this dress and combine it with the bottom of this top here because this top also has an empire waist. Or you can take the bodice of this one and add a full length skirt to it to make this a dress if you want. If you have a waist seam at your actual waist, then you can combine that pattern with any other pattern piece that has a waist seam. So for example, you could take the bodice of a dress like this with the waist seam and combine it with a top like this that also has a seam at the waistline. It's beautiful. Um, but that isn't, that is, that is not all. There is more. So those, that's certainly the easiest way is to say, okay, where is the seam line? Take the top from one, the bottom from another, mash them together, and you've got your first social mashup. Congratulations. Um, but there's also instances where you have like a waist band, for example. So the waist band is actually going to go across your natural waist. So you can't take a bodice that has a waist seam, like this one, and just attach a waistband to the bottom of the bodice and then attach a skirt to the bottom of that waistband, you will have essentially added a whole chunk of fabric material to right below your, you know, natural waistline. Not super flattering, but what you could do is you could take a little bit from the bodice and a little bit from the skirt and then add the waistband if you wanted that design detail. Uh, for my social mashup, I am combining, what am I combining? I am combining the top from Simplicity 8788 and the skirt from Butterick 6676. So you can see that this has a waist seam, but this does not. So then what do you do, Lindsay? Well, let me tell you. Um, so on all pattern pieces, <coughs> at least big four that I know for sure. Some indie patterns will probably have this marked as well, but you have a little indicator of where your waistline is. It's this little line and then it says waistline. So, and then on your skirt, this is the skirt pattern piece, you have a little indicator here of where your waistline is. If this were like a high-waisted skirt, there would be more pattern up here. If this were a low-waisted skirt, this waistline indicator wouldn't even be on here at all. 
So because this is at the seam line, five eighths below the cut line, you know that this is a skirt that's gonna sit at your natural waist. This top is intended to be, you know, four inches below your natural waist. So what you have to do is draw a horizontal line that matches the waistline, add your five eighths of an inch seam allowance, and then whenever you add these two things together, well, this is not, this it should be like this. Also, this is the back piece, so I don't know. You get the idea. You would add them together like this where the waistlines are matching up. And then just like that, you now have a dress with a waist seam at your natural waist. So, so long as your bodice pattern piece has this marked, that's gonna be super, super easy to do. If it doesn't have it marked, you can measure from your side seam line on any dress that fits you well and hits at your natural waist. You can measure down and see what that measurement is and then just kind of mark your own waistline, but I like that they have it already marked of where it's intended to be there. The third thing to keep in mind is closures, meaning zippers and buttons. If you're mashing a pattern with a side zipper to a pattern with a back zipper, you need to make sure that you move one of them so that they match. Likewise, if a pattern has like a button front closure and the other doesn't, you need to alter one of them to match the other or just accept that as a half button placket as part of your design. It's not as simple to switch out a sleeve from one pattern company to another, even pattern to pattern, that's difficult. You know, you need to measure the arm side, make sure they match, make sure, you know, where the shoulder seam is, it's gonna hit, it, that can get a little bit complicated. But if you just wanna make a dress pattern, become a jumpsuit, that is super, super simple. Just make sure you have that seam line, whether it's empire waist or natural waist, in the same place for both patterns, and you can interchange them to your heart's content. So yeah, that's a really simple, straightforward, quick and easy tutorial on how to do a pattern mashup, especially if it's your first one. Try not to overthink it too much. Just try a simpler one to begin with so that you can wrap your head around the concept of borrowing pattern pieces one from the other. So hopefully this, you know, inspires you a little bit to maybe try it if you were a little afraid to give it a go before. There's still plenty of time, I think, I mean, two whole weeks basically till the end of August. There's weekly giveaways where you technically don't even have to have anything sewn to enter those. So what are you waiting for? Go check out Social Mashup on Instagram. I have a link in the description box below where you can learn more about kind of the contest and how all of that is working. Um, but make sure you are following me and Lori from Girls in the Garden because we're posting about it pretty regularly. But other than that, that's gonna do it for me today. I hope this helped you guys a little bit and I will see you all very soon. Bye.